Hey everybody, welcome to Kids Church today. We're super pumped that you decided to join us today. Yeah, we're gonna have fun today. And I hope you check in with us, enjoy our time together. Hey, let's check out this intro video today with our good friend, Boudreaux. Oh, hey kids, what's up? It's me, Boudreaux here. We're continuing our series called Living the Dream. We've been looking at the life of Joseph and some of his biggest lessons. I'm sitting here in this waiting room, waiting for the doctor or what have you. Seems that I have a rash under my armpit that is making me scratch uncontrollably. And when I do, I look like a monkey. I've been sitting here waiting and waiting and waiting for them to call my name for my appointment. I've been here an hour and a half. And you know what? I am sick of waiting. Waiting? is super hard to do, huh? Have you ever had to wait on anybody or anything? One time I had to wait for a toy I really, really wanted. I had to wait on my mom to get home before I watched TV. I had to wait for a really long line in the roller coaster. I had to wait to go to Larry's Pizza. I had to wait on my hoverboard. One time I had to wait an hour, an hour and a half in line for a ride in Silver Dollar City. It's not easy having to wait. I'm having a really hard time waiting on this doctor to come out here and call my name. But you know what? Joseph, he had to wait in the hardest waiting room in the world. Prison. Do you remember how Joseph interpreted the cupbearer's dream? And then he told the cupbearer, go to Pharaoh and tell him to let Joseph out of prison. Well, guess what? He forgot all about him. Joseph had to wait in prison for over two years. You know, I bet Joseph felt totally forgotten. Not just by the cupbearer, but by God too. And you know, sometimes we feel the same way. We keep waiting and waiting and waiting to God to get us out of a certain situation when nothing happens. We might be asking ourselves, God, have you forgotten me? But God never forgets us. He knows exactly where we are and exactly what we need. Sometimes when we're going through tough times, we just want Jesus to swoop down like some kind of superhero or something. But you know what? He doesn't always save us right away. Sometimes he just makes us wait. We must learn to have patience with God and trust in his timing. Joseph had to learn the exact same thing in today's Bible lesson. He learned that it is not a good idea to rush God's plan. We must have patience and wait for him. Well, kids, it is time for you to get into today's lesson and learn how Joseph learned to be patient and wait on God. Uh, Pudro, the doctor will see you now. Well, kids, I gotta go. Until next time, sit back and relax and keep living the dream. Joseph sat in a nasty, dark, dank, gross, disgusting, blasted awful, dark prison, waiting on the Pharaoh's cupbearer to remember the promise that he made to Joseph when he got out. But all the while, nothing was happening. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, it would have been easy for Joseph at this point to think that God had forgotten all about him, but Joseph knew yep. that God had promised to take care of him and God comes through on his promises. That's right. He trusted God through it all, through that dark da, 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 prison. Badly he, bad. Yes, yeah. Yes. And ultimately God came through just like he says he does. Oftentimes we don't see the hand of God actively working and it's easy for us to think sometimes that God has forgotten us. That he has forgotten that we're going through some difficult situations and we're scared and we're mad and we're sad. But the Lord promises us that he will never leave us or forsake us. We have to ignore the fears, ignore the silence that we feel is happening around us, and understand that God is always working. Behind the scenes, He is there, active, even when we can't see it. In our lesson today, we're going to learn all about that. But let's check in with our good friend Skittles and see what's up today. What's up? What's up, everybody? It's me, the SKI to the double T L E S. 
Skittles is here, and I'm ready to tell you what's up. Today, we're talking about what it feels like to be forgotten. So every time somebody asks you what's up, you tell them God will never forget you. Nobody likes to be forgotten. Like that one guy that, that I knew that one time that did that, that one thing. What was his name? Ooh, I forgot. But the good thing is, God will never forget you. Even though you feel like you're all alone and you feel like God has forgotten you, you got to tell your feelings to wise up. God will never forget you. So anytime, I mean anytime somebody asks you, what's up, you tell them. God will never forget you. And that right there is what's up. I got a rainbow of flavor, and I'm living for my savior, Skittles out, baby. We've been following the life of Joseph and it has been a crazy roller coaster ride. Yep. He went from being his daddy's favorite kid, getting that coat of many colors, being hated by his brothers. They planned to do away with him, and, and but in the last minute they threw him in a pit, sold him into slavery, and then he went from slavery to being thrown into prison, you know, for a crime he didn't commit. Sure. It has been a horrible ride mm. for Joseph. Well. Today, we, hopefully, we're gonna see a little bit of that bad luck turning around. Um, remember how Joseph interpreted the dream for Pharaoh's cupbearer, remember that? Mm. Yeah, uh, and he told him, hey, would you please mention me uh, to Pharaoh uh, when he got out of prison? Do you remember that? Yeah, sadly, the cupbearer did not do that. Mm. Duh, that's just Joseph's story. Um, he completely forgot about Joseph. That's not cool. That's the worst. Joseph waited in that prison for two whole years. That's, like, that's a long time. That's, that's like 24 months. 700 and that's something days. That's quarantine for two that's years. That's a crazy quarantine. That's bad. Yeah. That's 730 days. Yeah. 17,520 hours. I just did that math. You are so good, Miss. That had, that had to have been tough for him, right? Yes, it had to have been. Even though the cupbearer had forgotten him, God hadn't. God still remembered Joseph and knew what was going on. Joseph didn't know, the, but the whole time that he was waiting in prison, God was working behind the scenes and to make something amazing happen. You know, God got the cupbearer his old job back with the Pharaoh. He was back in league with the Pharaoh. Yeah. Yeah, and he was back in Pharaoh's court in his house helping Pharaoh do his job. But one night, Pharaoh had a dream and he couldn't figure out what the dream meant. Yeah, so Pharaoh got all his smartest advisors together mm -hmm. and he asked them, can anybody tell me what my dream means? Yep. Okay, so they all got together. They put all their minds together, but none of them could figure it out. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, surprise, surprise. Suddenly, the cupbearer in Pharaoh's court was like, ding. <laughs> Wait, there's a guy that I know that can interpret dreams. He told Finally. Pharaoh that Joseph could interpret his dreams. That's right. So Pharaoh sent for Joseph from prison, mm -hmm. said, hey, go get him, bring him over here for us. Mm -hmm. uh, he might can interpret my dream. So Joseph heard the dream of Pharaoh and he was able to tell Pharaoh exactly what it meant. Wow. And here's what it meant. He said, there's going to be seven years of blessings on Egypt. Yep. Seven. Um, it's going to be a great time for Egypt. That's but oh. after the seven years, there's going to be a famine. It's going to be bad. It's going to be real bad. This famine's going to be awful. And But if we plan now, we can get around this bad famine. And here's what Remind we do. Remind us what a famine is. A famine is a time where it's there's no rain, all the crops are dying, all the animals are dying because there's no food for the animals, right. all the people are struggling to live because there's no food to eat. Famines are bad. awful. Okay, it's They're bad. bad. Bad news. Guys. Yes, yeah. bad news. Yeah. And he said, uh, but if we start saving food now, storing it away, then when the famine comes, we might do okay. So Egypt would be fine. Egypt would be fine. Okay, so Pharaoh was so amazed at Joseph. Wow. <laughs> yeah, he decided to put Joseph in charge of collecting all that food during the seven good years wait, of wait. blessing. He put Joseph in charge? He went That's from being a slave to a prisoner and now he's in charge? Things have turned around. 
That's a huge deal. It's huge. It's it's huge. <laughs> and it, it's it's huge. Yes. So he put Joseph in charge of collecting the food during the seven good years mm -hmm. and um, collecting it um, so he could distribute it during the famine years. He said, no one, no one is as wise as you, oh, Joseph. Yeah, was, I'll put you. That was spot I on. can't do a favorite voice. But I will put you as second in command in Egypt. Yeah. So here, I mean, things are really looking up for it's Joseph now. Only I will have more power than you. So in the whole country of Egypt, Joseph was second in command. He had just spent year, two years in, e in, in, the, not, in the Egyptian prison, yep. in the prison, but now he was second in command. Um, that's super amazing. Yep. In our lesson okay. today, we're going to learn how to handle the, the times where we think God has forgotten mm -hmm. us. Yeah. Hey, kids, it's your favorite famous daredevil, Bolt Mangle Spleen. And it's time for another stunt. But before we do that, let's learn today's power verse. Today's power verse says, For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. Hebrews 13, 5. Huzzah! That was a great power verse. But you know what? I'm going to need some help from my future stunt artists out there. Let's have all those crazy girls stand up and say it with me on the count of three, okay? All right, here we go. One, two, three. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. Hebrews 13, 5. Great job, girly girls. You can have a seat. Now, I need all the wild boys to stand up and say the power verse with me on the count of three. Are you ready? Here we go. One. Two, three. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. Hebrews 13, 5. Great job. You can sit down. Now, let's go to the stunt. Hey, kids, before we get to the stunt, I got to thinking about our power verse today and how sometimes we can feel forgotten, right? Like if someone forgets our birthday or when someone forgets that it's our turn for show and tell, or like when my crew forgets that I'm wearing a straight jacket and I'm in a tub in the bottom of the ocean and they leave me there for 25 minutes. Reggie, sometimes we forget things. But let me tell you something. Just like our power verse says, God will never forget us no matter what we do. So let's have everybody stand up and do the power verse together on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. Hebrews 13, 5. And now it's time to do one of Bolt Mangle Spleen's Death Defying Stunts. <laughs> Here we are out in the rain. Now, I asked Reggie if it was safe for us to do this stunt out in the rain, and he said no. That's all right, because I asked my second stunt coordinator if it would be safe and if I should do the stunt, and this is what she said. Do it now. So, that's good enough for me. Let's do it. Here's what we're going to do today. Old Bolt's gonna get inside my trusty old can here. As you see, it's tied to some rope. And if we follow the rope, it leads us all the way to Reggie's grandma's car. <laughs> Bubby's was busy today. We gotta connect it there. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get inside this can here. The car's gonna pull me going 88 miles per hour. Right, 88 miles per hour. And I believe that through that, I'll be able to go back in time. All right, that's the plan. <laughs> so here we go. Safely inside the bucket. Down I go. All right. Reggie, you ready? You got the thumbs up. Okay. Let's give it a go. Onward and forward to 88 miles per hour. <laughs> future hurts <laughs> but we have arrived another successful stunt bolt mango splay <laughs> i'll see you guys next week i sure hope they have hospitals in the future oh.
Oh, yep, that was loud. It was loud, yes. <laughs> waiting is so hard. It's a hard thing to wait. Not just waiting on Christmas, which is hard, or waiting for your birthday is doubly hard, or waiting on somebody to pick you up after school. That can be tough. But sometimes we have to wait on God, and that's hard. Yeah, that's that's hard. Yeah. Um, have you ever prayed for something um, and had to wait for it to happen? Um, has God ever promised you something, um, but then you had to wait a long time or wait a while for it to happen? Um, waiting can be hard. I mean, even for us as adults, it's, it's not easy. Waiting is hard. It's hard for us, and it was hard for Joseph. See, Joseph had to wait for the Lord for two years in prison. I mean, it was more than two years because he had been there before for a little while before the cupbearer left. So it was more than two years after the cupbearer was released. But why? Why did God want him to wait? Why do you think Joseph had to wait? Why do we have to wait on God sometimes? We often think that God should answer now. You know, I ask God for a question, and I want an answer now, God. Yes. You're going to come through and tell me now. And it's almost like we're demanding an answer from God, and that's not how it works. Mm -hmm. God is the king of kings, and who are we to demand an answer? Anyway, that's a side note. But God, God doesn't always act on our timing. Mm -hmm. See, Joseph was stuck in prison, and he would hope to get out, but it just never seemed to come. But he had not done anything wrong, right? He didn't do yeah. anything wrong. He felt stuck there. Right. Um, but what does it mean about a person? What does it say about a person when God doesn't answer their question right away? Does it say something about who we are? Hmm. Well, I can tell you one thing. Waiting doesn't mean you've done anything wrong. That's right. Yep. Just because you're waiting on God to come through does not mean that you didn't hear from God. Nope. Um, it doesn't mean that you've done something wrong. Oftentimes, when people don't get an answer to what they're praying for right away, they start to think that God's mad at them. Mm. Um, and that's not the case. They think oh. they've done something wrong, and that's not the case either. Um, they think maybe that God's punishing for them for something. Had Joseph done anything wrong? No, he had not. To put him not. in prison? No, no, he sure hadn't. And uh, he had trusted God just as he was supposed to. So he had obeyed God and yet he was still in prison. So he hadn't done anything wrong. He had done the right thing the entire time that he was in prison and, and before when he was working That's right. in the, um, in, he was head of the servants. Mm -hmm. He had done the right thing the whole time. The whole time. Mm -hmm. Just because you're waiting doesn't mean that God has forgotten you. Yeah. Doesn't mean you've done anything wrong. That's an important thing to remember. Another thing to remember is while you're waiting, God is working. Yeah, he is. See, Joseph didn't know it, but the whole time he was waiting, God was working yep. behind the scenes to make some awesome things happen. So God got, okay, first of all, he got the cupbearer out of prison and back in his spot mm -hmm. in, in the king's court, in Pharaoh's court. And then God gave Pharaoh the dream. That's the second thing. Oh, that's the third thing that yep, happened. That's third thing. I wasn't counting. So then, um, out of nowhere, God calls the cupbearer to remember Joseph. Mm -hmm. Oh, remember, there's that guy yeah. in prison. All right. <laughs> so finally, Joseph was brought before Pharaoh to interpret his dream. So God was working behind mm -hmm. there, even when Joseph couldn't see it. God was working to put all of these many steps together, and Joseph didn't know it was happening the whole time. Mm -hmm. Joseph was waiting, but while he was waiting, God was doing something great. Mm -hmm. Did Joseph know what was happening? No. No, he didn't. Mm -mm. As far as he knew, he would be stuck in prison forever. Slow that down to slow mo. See that? Stuck in prison forever. That's right. But Joseph did something that we need to always do when we feel like God has forgotten us. We need to trust God and he will come through. Yes. Joseph trusted God to come through. He trusted God the whole time. And God made sure that he came through, um, that everything came together at just the right time. And God knows when that is. So kids, we often want God to do things right now. And we yep. think that's right what's now. best from our limited perspective, from what we can see. But if God had made the cupbearer uh, mention Joseph to Pharaoh right away, um, Pharaoh may have done nothing. 
Um, God knew when that right time was for the cupbearer to remember um, Joseph and mention him to Pharaoh. Such a good point. Um, yeah, so instead, God found that perfect time. And as a result, Joseph became the number two in command in Egypt, um, in the, com the country of Egypt. You can trust God. Yep. yep. You can trust God's timing. When you're waiting on God, it's time well spent. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. Nope. No, it's not easy. But we must trust God. And He will bring about His plan in His timing. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened with Joseph. And the story turned out awesome for Joseph because he waited patiently in an honorable way for God. And he trusted God the whole time. That's, that's a, isn't that an awesome story mm -hmm. for us to remember today? Mm -hmm. It is. Hey, can I pray with you guys real quick? And then I hope you have an awesome day. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for teaching us about Joseph and his story. Thank you for showing us all about the struggles that Joseph had. But because he struggled, Lord, when you brought him out and gave him victories, it was so much sweeter. His victories were so awesome. Lord, you took him from being a slave to being the second in command of the greatest nation in the world at the time. Lord, thank you for that story. I can't wait to hear more of his story coming up next week. And God, I pray that you'll bless everybody today who's watching uh, at home. And Lord, and those that are here today in church, Lord, please bless them and help them to have the most awesome week where they make awesome decisions for you and to help tell all their friends about how great you are and how much you love them. Help us, Lord, when we ask for your help, to trust that you're going to come through and help us in your way and in your timing, and it's going to be amazing when it happens. We love you, Jesus, because you love us and showed us how we can love each other. And then we pray, amen. Hey, don't forget, we're meeting here at Unity Church every Wednesday night at 6.30. Come join us. It's awesome. And Sundays at 9 and 10.30 in the morning. We're having so much fun. We'd love to have you join us. Mm -hmm. Talk to your mom and dad about it, and y'all come on down. It's Unity Church in Greenville, North Carolina. We hope you have an awesome week, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. I didn't, but it sounded like I was going to. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Right. Sorry. Sorry. All right. <laughs>